you um, you mentioned being sick. You had a chronic condition where you had some fatigue, depression, um, some other things that were happening with your body. Sometimes some of us, we may feel some of these symptoms, but we don't always know how serious it is. So mm. was there something where you discovered or you knew that this was not just something that was passing? Uh, you know, the headache started in January of like 2016, right? I woke up and I, I had a car accident in high school. So sometimes I wake up and my neck is stiff or I have a little pain there because I live with chronic pain, right? And in the back of my head would, you know, feel a little strained. And that was normal for me. And so this morning, I, that morning I woke up, I felt that in my neck and I felt it in the back of my head, but it rested there. It never went away. Now, the most that I would have an episode sometimes could last a week. A week came and went, two weeks came and went, a month came and went. That pain stayed there for a year and seven months. And so, I mean, after a month or two, I was already going to, girl, you name it, I was trying to acupuncture, you know, going to the doctor, I was getting injections in my head, uh, injections in my spine, uh, taking steroids. I was doing anything and everything to try to get relief and nothing was helping. And then the pain that I was feeling here started to go throughout my body. I started to feel dizzy and I was still working at this time. I was working my little eight to five job. And I did that until probably like maybe June. Uh, I, you know, I was out of work for like maybe two weeks. And then after I started to feel a little bit better because I would have like good days and bad days, but it, the presence was there. And I was like, this is not normal. There was a day I lost my vision today. Everything was blurred. Like, I started to fall when I would walk. I really convinced myself too, because you know, the mind will convince you that you are about to die. And my mama died of ALS. And so I convinced myself that, oh my God, this is, this, I have ALS, right? Uh, because I would start to fall and I had got injections in my spine. I had a cervical epidural. I had it more than once. And the last time that I got it, I lost all like Mo like mobility of my right hand. I couldn't hold my phone. I was tripping even more. And I was like, this is the same thing that happened to my mom. I really started convincing myself, which also let, you know, led me into panic. I started having major anxiety. My panic attacks just started going into manic panic. So it'd be like 50 a day sometimes. And it just was not a, you know, a good feeling, but uh, it definitely started. The change happened. Um, you know, the awakening of myself, like something is, is wrong. I have, you know, the doctors never figured it out. They kept saying, well, we know it's something and we know it's like autoimmune, but we just can't figure it out. And uh, I think the last rheumatologist I went to, she told me, she said, um, well, you know, when we can't tell women, you know, what's wrong with them, we tell them they have fibromyalgia. I said, well, I don't want to just accept something because you can't figure it out. She's like, but that's, that's what we do. And so I was like, I'm not in good hands at this point. And so, but yeah. But it, it was your daughter who uh, showed you the documentary about, you know, how eating a lot of proteins, eating animals, essentially, how that can impact the body. Now, was your daughter vegan at this point? No, honey, she was just, you know, she was watching her mom suffer, right? And they watched it at school. And she came home and was like, mom, we saw this documentary. I think you should watch it. And I did. And it, you know, it was a light bulb moment for me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is something I haven't tried, right? I tried every drug, but I haven't tried to change what I'm eating because I wasn't an unhealthy eater, right? I haven't had red meat or pork since I was 15. And I was a vegetarian for like five years from 15 to 20. And then I started back eating chicken and fish and turkey when me and my husband, you know, moved in together. And so I only ate fish and turkey and chicken and I'm allergic to milk. So I didn't do dairy anymore anyway. So in my mind, I was a healthy eater, but I also realized I was not eating to feel well. I was eating to look well. And that was a problem, right? So, um, you know, it, it was a battle with food with me for a long time. Uh, Explain that difference. You said eating to look well, not feel well. What's the difference? Because I was in, in my mind about my weight. I got to, you know, if I eat protein and, you know, a little bit of greens, I'm going to stay looking a certain way. I'm in, I'm in Hollywood. I'm in entertainment. I got to look a certain way, right? Because I wasn't free. I was living for everybody else. I was living to be accepted. 
And so I was eating or not eating some days, right? So if I got on, I would weigh myself probably, if I had an audition coming up or a shoot or something was coming up, or I had an event and I wanted to look a certain way, I might weigh myself 10, 12 times in a day. And based on what that scale said is what I ate or did not eat, right? That's eating to look a certain way. Eating to feel well, eating to be well, you are intentional with what you're putting in your body, right? And so I started being intentional with eating things that are alive, right? Plants and, you know, fruit and vegetables and trying to be what I ate alive and well. Um, a lot of times people say, you know, I never talk about this because I never want people to feel judged because I'm not that type of person um, and certainly not that type of vegan, right? But the vegan community can be very judgmental. But I remember when God revealed to me one day in prayer, he said, you always hear people say you are what you eat. And I ate chicken and, you know, turkey almost every day, right? And I thought about how these animals now are mass produced and they are not in good condition. They are heavily like in panic and depressed. And I was eating that every day. I was eating their panic. I was eating their depression. And in turn, I became panic and I became depressed. And also I was eating their death. And I also felt like I was going to die. And so I had to change that to where I don't eat those things. I don't eat uh, feelings other than my own. <laughs> and I want to feel good about tab. So, <laughs> so um, was it a slow transition or did you just go cold turkey and just drop? We started everything? with a 30, a 30 day vegan challenge. Right. So I, we watched the documentary. I was like, I told my husband, I was like, let's try it together for 30 days. And he was like, okay. You know, at that point, everybody is trying to help me get better, <laughs> you know? And so in 30 days, the first 10 days, my headache went away after a year and seven months. And I was like, I'm on to something. And so I kept with it. So the 30 days turned into four years and how, how many months later? <laughs> well, and not, and not just four years, it turned into an incredible success story that I think it's important to remind people that was 20 years in the making. This was not, <laughs> right? This I know people like to brand you as an overnight sensation, but you were not overnight. Right. Um, you have been pouring a lot of yourself into becoming a success in the entertainment industry. And I wanna just quickly go back to something you said, you talked about how you were living for everybody else and trying to um, meet a Hollywood standard. And I think maybe people who don't live in LA, I live in LA, I think you do too, is yeah. like, what they don't understand that there's a difference between say thin and Hollywood thin. Yeah. Like, Hollywood thin is a, a totally different thing. Like they think thin is a zero or a two. Yeah, yeah. Right. We in our community, we might think a eight, uh, maybe a six, yeah. but they right. think a totally different level. So, um, yeah. what was that like for you to see or to experience, you know, in real time how the standard was so different than probably how who you thought you were and how you lived your life? You know, it had started so early for me, right? Um, and I think it is even as far as like you know, watching my mom as a little girl always struggle with her weight always gave me a thought about weight anyway. And so I remember when my daughter uh, was 12 because she was in sixth grade. I remember this like yesterday, I was in her room and I was talking to her about something. And as I was walking out of her room, she had this mirror there. And I was like, Ugh. you know, I just started tearing myself apart in the mirror. And she was like, at 12, she looked at me. She said, mom, you know, if you do that in front of me, that I'm going to think something's wrong with my body. At 12, she told me that. And that was the last time I ever talked about any imperfection of my body in front of her. But it was an eye-opening for me. Uh, but I was so damaged because of the standards. I remember going to, you know, casting workshops or, you know, auditions or hearing back that, oh, they think you were just a little bit too thick or, you know, you need to lose a little weight or how's your workout? You know, boldly asking these questions, right? I mean, I had friends or, you know, family members in the industry who would also be like, well, you know, if you want to be a leading lady, you got to have a certain look, you know, it, even for me straightening my hair, I would always wear my hair straight because they said my complexion, you can't be a natural girl with your complexion 
on television. You're going to have to wear it straight and be a two or a four. And I believed that. That was the sad part. I believed it. But I had been conditioned for so long to believe it. Right? So um, it, I'm happy that I went through it, though, because now I can stand on top of it. Right? I can show up as tab, however I am. Uh, and also, I have raised an amazing daughter who is like, girl, we're going to be exactly how we are, right? And, and proud about it. But uh, it, it definitely is something that I see slowly is changing with the acceptance of us as us, uh, but still needs a lot of work.